Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John Magi, and I will be your host. And in this episode, we're going to talk to you about all the new stuff that was announced at D23 about Walt Disney World, Disneyland, and Adventures by Disney. I'm joined at the table by our panel of experts, Client Services Manager for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Kevin Close. Hello, everyone. Agent Consultant for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Tracy Heinrichs. Hi, everyone. And back in our production facility, we have our producer, Craig Williams. Hello. Again, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, recently, well, recently for us, I'm not sure how recently to the point that this will air, there was a D23 convention out in Japan, and they had a bunch of exciting announcements, exciting mostly because some dates were mentioned about when some major projects uh, should come online. So that's exciting. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the big ones, um, let you know a little bit about them, and then we're going to talk about them a little bit from the perspective, I think, about from the planning and what you should think about if you want to experience these specific new attractions, hotels, things like that. All right, so we're going to get started. The first one is that Pixar Pier will open June 23rd, 2018 at Disney's California Adventure Park. There'll be a new Incredibles float to join the Paint the Night Parade. We actually talked about this in the past, but I think the big deal is that there's actually a date now. Pixar Pier will open June 23rd, 2018 at Disney's California Adventure Park. This reimagined land will feature four whimsical neighborhoods representing beloved Pixar stories with newly themed attractions, food, and merchandise. Guests will enter Pixar Pier through a new Pixar Pier through a new marquee, uh, which will be topped by the iconic Pixar lamp later in the year. Uh, the June 23rd opening of Pixar Pier will also include the Incredicoaster a super combination of character figures, lighting, and special effects that will bring the Parr family racing along you or racing alongside you in a high-speed adventure. Also coming in June uh, is a dazzling new float for the popular Paint the Night Parade featuring Mr. Incredible, Elastigirl, Frozone from The Incredibles. The new float will bring all the fun and excitement of the Incredibles world to life with high-tech pop art effects inspired by the mid-century modern style of the film. Dynamic and innovative visual technology will also bring Violet, Dash, and Jack-Jack to life, showcasing their powers in surprising ways. Uh, Paint the Night Parade makes its Disney California Adventure Park debut when the first ever Pixar Fest Celebration begins throughout the Disneyland Resort on April 23rd, 2018. So exciting news that we have dates for this now and a little bit more detail. Um, you know, always fun when something new happens and something new occurs. Um, I'm not a huge Incredibles fan. I like the movie. I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that there's a new movie coming out. Yes. Yeah, uh, that's what that I would say, yeah, they, they are going over the top on Incredibles. But uh, while I've never had Incredibles at the in the favorites of my list of Pixar movies, uh, it's but then again, when there's only like three bad movies in their lineup, it's kind of hard to really pick your true favorites. But uh, I was never like one of those people who are insane about it. But this is a gap that hasn't been filled for a long time. People have been clamoring for more incredible stuff on top of the sequel that's finally coming out. So I, I think this is going to be just massively popular, even though people lost their minds over losing uh, Paradise Pier. You know, we talked about that uh, months ago and, and losing that whole aesthetic Incredibles is going to be bring people in, and it, it's going to be a very, very busy summer if you're heading to pick, uh, Pixar Pier. Is Incredicoaster new, or is it taking over an existing ride? That takes over California Screamin'. So they are switching up the queue, like you said in there, adding in uh, their family house and uh, adding some new effects. Uh, no more Neil Patrick Harris voice uh, ringing throughout the parks from that either, so... Uh, but as far as the coaster, the the track is going to be the exact same. They're not. They're they are replacing little bits and pieces uh, right now uh, while they're working on the whole area. But if if you enjoyed the ride before, it'll be the same 
just with the Incredibles added into it. So anything that brings more Edna mode into the park is a good thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with Craig. I think that it's going to be very popular. I think oh, people I think are going to so. want to see it, especially at first. Yep. When it first opens up. Yeah. So be prepared if you're. It's exciting. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to miss the old area, but I'm also one who is like perfectly fine with things moving forward and it's got to change. I think this is going to appeal to a wider audience. I think, I think. The, problem, the thing is I don't have any emotional attachment to Paradise Pier. So right, right. I'm, I guess maybe. I, that was one of the few coasters I actually still got on. So I'm glad it's still the same track and it's still the same. Mickey's Fun Wheel of Death is there, so it'll just be rethemed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I am really interested in now that Paint the Night's moving to California Adventure, it's how they like i've watched the pixar play parade there before Mm -hmm. but let's be honest not a lot of people show up to really watch that you get maybe like one or two people deep but paint the night every single time i tried to watch it at disneyland right you're talking three or four people deep and that's that's on a slow night so paint the night is the best parade ever i wonder how easy especially now adding on an extra flow too how easy is it going to be to get a spot for it wow. in, in disney california adventure well, the good it's news is california tough. adventure has so much more space yeah that is true you know, too and so it disney at the disneyland having the whole the parade there everything is so compact yeah. and trying to maneuver and trying to get through so i'm hoping the more open space yeah. of uh, of the new park or the new park of putting it into the, the different park is going to make a difference i was a fan of spectro magic and I even like the electric light parade, except for the music. Um, but paint the night is like it's yeah. beyond. It's next level. Yeah, for sure. Very, very cool. Good. Something to look forward to. Should be fun. We're going to be there on Adventures by Disney later. Not till sh- December. Not till December. So we'll get a chance to see that. All right. Speaking of Adventures by Disney, uh, also during D twenty three, Adventures by Disney has announced a brand new Japan vacation for two thousand nineteen. Adventures by Disney announced a new Japan vacation. Uh, The trip will offer immersive cultural experiences, such as visiting temples in Kyoto, learning sword techniques with a master samurai, and exploring the bustling city of Tokyo and more. The Adventures by Disney Japan vacation will open for booking later this spring. So, short description of it, because that is all that has been released. Nothing else, dates, amounts, um, specifics of how many days. Disney and I have a different definition of spring. (laughs) Yes. This is not, we talked about this on the the Tuesday show. This is not going to be released until May. Probably, I was, I have been led to believe the middle of May. But nothing is firm, nothing can be, there's no commitment there. But this is, whenever ABD has done a survey of where people wanted to go. A lot of times they'll ask past guests, where else would you like to go in the world? The number one choice is always Japan. I have a feeling this is going to be more expensive than other trips. The Asian trips usually are. I think it will probably be a day or two longer than most of the European trips. And I think it's going to sell exceptionally well, especially the first year. I agree. I agree for sure. Yeah, this is going to be a popular trip. It's going to be expensive. Again, no details yet. I can't imagine, though, that they are going to go bring you to Japan without an opportunity to visit Tokyo Disneyland. I don't know if it will be There has par- been no mention of that, no mention but of I, that's, a, my that's a, my right. speculation. That's an assumption. My assumption, my speculation. Even if it's not part of the trip, I can't imagine they would at least make an opportunity for you to visit pre or post. Right. right. Ending in Tokyo, beginning in Tokyo, so that you can at least add that on. Because I think for most Disney fans, that's going to be part of the draw. That's part of the draw for sure. Well, that's also where the biggest airports are. And, you yeah. know, that's where they're going to have people. It's funny what to. you said about Disney Spring and it being in the middle of May. It made me think it'll be the one year anniversary of our May of 17 release, which <laughs> shall go down in infamy. <laughs> Remember that? Mm, I do. <sighs> we've actually, we like to travel to Hawaii at that time of year and we've pushed ours back this year. Yeah. To try Because of last year. Because of last year. <laughs> There were meetings in the hallway where it's like, do you just want to die now? (laughs) I believe somebody at the table may have resigned in her pajamas. (laughs) (laughs) Because it wasn't just ABD. It was ABD and DCL, and it was spread out over four days. And if you were right-handed, you could book this day. (laughs) It was crazy. Anyways, do you Do you think that this is going to take away from other trips? Is this the type of thing where... 
Um, people who go on Adventures by Disney a lot will now say, boy, instead of doing another California Backstage Magic, I'm going to go to Japan. Do you think that this will... Mm, I think for past trip? ABD guests, this is going to be another a, a new thing to try. Mm-hmm. Iceland sold very well when yeah. it first came out. I mean, it sold out for this year. Um, I think this is going to be phenomenally popular. And ABD trips tend to um, mature. They do their first year and then they find out that things work or don't work and they sort of improve them or remove things. And there are like Disney World, like Disneyland, as soon as people start taking things away or adding new things, you've ruined a work of art. So, yes, I think this will draw people away like the river cruises. Mm -hmm. I think the river cruises drew people away from other land adventures. I think for the first year, this will draw people I think for 2019, Japan's going to be the hot trip. That's an, that's my prediction. I mean, Japan's been on my bucket list for a long, long time, and not not just because of the, the parks. Disney parks. That's actually that would be an added bonus. I just love the idea of Tokyo itself. From what I've seen in in videos, movies, it just it seems like something that would is like a complete different world. That even though I might not enjoy it thoroughly. It's something that I feel like I, I want to see it for myself. Right. To I see would like spectacle. to see more of Japan. Yeah. We had 60 hours in Japan with jet lag. And we tried to eat, sleep, and see two Disney parks before moving on to a China adventure. I don't think we gave Japan a fair shake. I agree. I think we tried to cram too much into it yeah. and made it uncomfortable for us. I would like to see Japan. We'll wait and see what the specifics are. If we would try this specific, this particular adventure or not, but it does intrigue me. Yeah, me too. Excuse Especially me. for me, somebody, I have not yet, I haven't done China, I haven't been to Japan, I haven't done an Asian country, so it's really high on my bucket list. Um, being able to do it with the ABD safety net is even more appealing to me. Yep. I'm concerned about things like food. I'm a little bit picky and I'm, you know, some, and so to be able to do that with Adventures by Disney, I think whether or not it's going to replace other trips for people, it will depend on whether those people were ever considering going to an Asian country. You know, like, I don't think if you're, if your yearly ABD is backstage magic, you may not be ready to make the leap to Japan. Yeah. But if you're, I mean, I think most Adventures by Disney travelers are adventurous. And they're looking for the next thing. And I can really see the appeal. I have a bunch of folks who are repeat mm-hmm. backstage magic folks, but that doesn't preclude them from other right. Right. Adventures. They do that in addition to... They do others as well. It's it's just... um, Yeah. It's kind of like going back to your... Going back to Disney World. It's something they enjoy doing. But they also travel other places. So I don't know that this would... I think it's going to draw people away from other adventures that would have booked Italy. Mm. That (laughs) Japan is... I I know there's a whole group of people out there who like the newest adventure. Yeah. Where are you going now? Mm Mm-hmm. Just to remind folks, uh, Adventures by Disney is similar to Disney Cruise Line in that their pricing is tier-based. So as soon as it comes out, it will be the cheapest it could be. And then from there, it's going to go up as the trips fill up. In the past, they've been having early booking discounts, but they're limited in the number per departure. So I don't know what the dates. I don't know what the season is for Japan. I really, everything John just said is all we know at this point. (laughs) Sword fights and temples. <laughs> <laughs> that's like all we know. That's, doesn't seem safe to me. But it's okay. Not sword fights in temples, oh. but sword. It wasn't sword fights. It was sword work. I forget what the word they for. And Tokyo. There are no other details and no one's saying anything. So I don't know what the dates are or what the season's going to be. But I would suggest that no matter what they release, there are going to be dates that are more popular than others, especially if this is a summer thing. And that those, if there's early booking discounts, there's a lot of unknowns here because they're not saying anything. Those dates are going to go really fast, especially for Japan. Exactly. All right, moving on to the next announcement from D23. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway to open in 2019 at Disney's Hollywood Studios. The first Mickey-themed ride-through attraction, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad, will open in 2019. It will feature a new catchy theme song created especially for the attraction, as well as a new experience that defies logic that Disney is calling 2.5D with no glasses required. (laughs) 
On the attraction, the fun begins when guests see the premiere of a new cartoon short with Mickey and Minnie getting ready for a picnic. As they head out, they drive somewhere alongside. <laughs> I lost my text. They drive alongside a train and find out that the engineer is goofy. Then one magical moment lets them step into the movie and onto Goofy's train for a wacky wild ride. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad will put you inside the wacky and unpredictable world of a Mickey Mouse cartoon short where the, where you'll star and anything can happen. Uh, the teams creating the attraction are currently working with partners at uh, Disney Anima- Television Animation, the people who created the popular and award-winning Mickey Shorts. To keep the characters and story authentic and to make sure you'll, you're able to step through the movie screen and join Mickey and his friends like never before. This sounds like so much fun, I can't even stand it. It's probably the thing that I've been most excited about. I talked this about, about this on the Tuesday show. My love started with the classic Disney. When Disney World first opened, everything was a Disney World attraction. I have talked about not being a superhero fan or a Star Wars fan. And to me, while I understand that Disney owns them, in my mind, and I'm old, those are not Disney those are not Disney properties. This, to me, sounds like old-fashioned, exciting Disney. And I'm really... The music, the technology, I just... I'm very excited about this. And I don't care if it's super thrilling. I just think it sounds like fun. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a great family attraction. Mm-hmm. Something that if you can't ride coasters or you don't want to ride coasters or you don't want to you know, be dropped in an elevator this sounds like it'll be a lot of fun we also talked on the tuesday show this technology sounds a lot like what they use in mystic manor in hong kong and we had a chance to experience that unbelievable visuals be, I, I loved ratatouille mystic manor was one of my favorites it was right up there with it especially because of that technology mm-hmm. the fact that you didn't need glasses because you don't see 3D as well right. Right. as other folks. So the fact that you could see this. There were um, effects in there that I still think about. So I'm hoping it's along those lines and it does that for it. I don't know that this is a game changer as far as um, attracting people to the parks. I think what it's doing, though, is kind of rounding out this park. As you start to see the picture for the studios coming together between Star Wars Land, the new Pixar area, this attraction... It's really starting, like, the Hollywood Studios is going to be the place to be in 19. And I think it's appealing to the classic fan, you know, the Disney diehard. And that is may, really making that park just have this thing that's kind of appealing to a lot of different people. Again, for kids, I think kids are going to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping everyone goes to Star Warsville. So you can ride Star that over. Star Warsville. <laughs> is that the official name now? It Star is Warsville? in my head. <laughs> Um, I think that's where they bowl. Splitsville, Star Warsville. <laughs> Star Wars Abbey. Um, I, I think this sounds exciting. It sounds to me like a vintage Disney World ride with modern technology, and I love that idea. Yeah. And I'm one of those folks who was sad that the great movie ride went away. I know it was dated. I know it was out of its time, out of its element. But I'm an old movie go. fan, so I thought it was fine. Yeah, but, right. but I was sad to see it go. So the fact that this is going to replace it, Seems like a good idea. Uh, I think. Sorry, go ahead. It's another attraction in this park, or one of the few attractions in this park that the entire family can do together. So you know, you, you this is the park with Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror, and I know there are some families who do those together. But you know, if I'm with my parents, they're not doing exactly. those. Right, but Whereas, there's, and there's Toy Story Midway yeah, Mania. Yeah, so Toy Story Mania, um, Soren, you know, a few attractions that I think of that we all do together. And I think this attraction is, I'm for me, is going to be put in that class. Well, and what I personally see for the future, um, you know, throughout the 2000s and stuff, everyone was always going on message forums for a long time, Disboard saying, well, when's this villains park going to come? It's going to be exciting attractions, roller coasters. It's going to be more adult friendly. Honestly, that's where I see Hollywood Studios starting to go. While this is going to be family friendly, uh, it's still going to have an excitement to it. It's going to be a dark ride plus uh, Mm kind of the same way Toy Story Midway Mania, not Mm -hmm. Overly aggressive, but it's a plus level. I think these are going to be the new benchmarks for family attractions. But then 
Hollywood Studios is just going up from there. So while it's so for the longest time, everyone wanted this more, mm -hmm. this more, this next level park. I think that's what Hollywood Studios is going for. And slowly we'll see stuff like uh, Beauty and the Beast uh, stage show start to go away. Little Mermaid, Playhouse Disney. Yeah. And it's going to be just next level on every single realm. I hope so. Yeah, I, I think it's do. needed. Something in between yeah. Peter Pan and Rock and Roller Coaster. Right, exactly. There's always yeah. a place for a small world, but it's nice to have that next yep. thing you can do. Don't touch. Oh, no. oh, oh, oh. I shouldn't even mention I'm it. Not look. I am. I am sick. The show that we do after it's announced, the small world is closing. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> It'll be ugly. <laughs> Don't even say that. All right. Up next is the big one. This is going to be the game changer. Star's Star Wars Hotel Galaxy's Edge updates. It was announced that the immersive Star Wars inspired resort will be built at Walt Disney World Resort with seamlessly connected to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disney's Hollywood Sid Studios. Something we've been talking about for a while now. You'll be able to walk out of that hotel and you'll be able to step right into the theme park. This first of its kind res resort will combine luxury with complete immersion into an authentic Star Wars story. Guest journey through space will start when everyone departs together for a multi-day Star Wars adventure by boarding a starship alive with characters and stories that unfold all around them during a voyage through the galaxy. At the resort, guests immediately become active citizens of the galaxy and can dress up in proper attire. Every resort window will also have a view into space. The opportunity for immersion at this resort will also stand out among all Disney resorts around the globe as it will be seamlessly connected to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disney's Hollywood Studios, uh, allowing guests a total Star Wars experience. So, very cool. All of these things are very exciting, very awesome. You'll notice there was no date mentioned. <laughs> we cannot book this for you. We cannot price it for you. I know you want to be the first one on the list to stay there. We have no further details. But you could start selling your costumes now. You could if you really want to. Doesn't this sound like a cruise? Everybody's going to depart together. I know they're not going to do it on a ship, but think about it. The voyage is going to start together, right? So you don't have, already you don't have a resort where people are coming and going every single day. So now is this going to be, we've heard talks about it being sold like three-day packages or whatever. I wonder if it's going to have a start date. Hmm, that's interesting. I didn't think of it that way. So let's say, you know, this Saturday is the start of the next voyage, it goes for three days. So now you've moved through this experience just like you would a cruise, really. You can dress up or not if you want. Um, so it kind of, as you were describing it, made me wonder if this is not going to be, I'm going to check in today for two nights or yeah. come and go. Because if they're going to have that seamless where everybody's going on this adventure together, don't they all have to start it together? Yeah, it sounds like, like a timeshare kind of a thing where you check in on Saturday. But I, sure. I, I see, what, you, know, you always got to bring it down, don't you? But I can see what you're saying is you want everybody to be in the storyline right. participating together. I interpret it a little bit different. I'm going to really, this is going to be a really strange reference. Many years ago in Las Vegas, there used to be something called the Star Trek experience. Okay. And what it was is it was an attraction and you got into character and you were going to be part of the Enterprise. And part of the experience was you were going to participate in a Star Wars-like experience, but then your thing that you were doing got um, interrupted by the Klingons. So you stood on what was a transporter pad, and everyone stood there thinking one thing was going to happen, the lights go out, and all of a sudden you're on board the ship of the Enterprise. This is kind of what I envisioned happening, was like maybe there was a more of a ceremony when you showed up, that you would go through this experience with whoever was checking in at the same Could time. Be. But if they yours want you to be in the same Yours is probably more likely. Mine sounds more fun, but yours definitely sounds more likely but now that you sounds, say it like that. <laughs> but yours sounds more of how is it going to make sense. We talked about this on the other show. If there's, I apologize, Greg, I know no. you want to get in on this, no. but if there's, let's say there's a theme of there's a Star Wars spy mm -hmm. that you're trying to find out or trying to follow and stuff like that, you have to control the story. Right. So you have to control the events that take place. Yeah, the the way to go that like the way you were talking about it seems like it would go into that realm of forced entertainment that you have to participate and that's one thing Disney has been uh, you know they've kind of said it in the one release that it's if you want to be a part of it you can be a part of it you can dress the 
the role, but uh, but maybe that will change as it gets closer. It'll say, listen, if you thought you were showing up to a Star Wars themed hotel and it's going to be nice and that, it's not it. So if you don't want to play, this isn't for you. And it, it could end up being that. You can send so. me that email today. <laughs> <laughs> and so you think about it, if you compare it again, go back to the comparison of the cruise, you can show up for the cruise and participate as much or as little as you want. Yeah. So if, because it's from the beginning when I've heard about this, it sounds like I can't do this. Like, it sounds like they want me to be immersed. They want me to be involved. They want me to know who that guy is and what that guy is and what I'm looking out of the window at. And I'm not going to know any of that stuff. So it sounded from the beginning like I was out. And so, I don't know. It's just kind of interesting. Just the way you were reading the description made me think of that. Mm-hmm. And they were very specific about, I remember in early announcements, about the length of time. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see what they do. But like John said, we know nothing. Well, again, you said I'm reading this sentence again. Everyone departs together for a multi-day right. Star Wars adventure. And that was like that was like boom, 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 boom. That was radar for me. Do we me. know anything about the size of this hotel? Have nothing. They mentioned I don't it? even think we know where it's going. Uh, no, it's going to yeah. go to the land right beside Is it? We know uh, that now? Star Wars land. Okay. Yeah. And one of the reasons why there's this... Um, they're they're touting it as a cool thing that every room will have a view into space is because they can't really have windows (laughs) because that's a really bad part. You'd be looking over a wide world of sports. You know, I don't think that would be a good view to to be immersed in. So I think instead of windows, you're going to have screens. It's like what they do use on the ship with the virtual portholes. Yeah, I think that's what you're kind of selling me on this now. It's going to be a cruise ship. (laughs) It's not going to be an actual cruise ship. Well, no, they're going to build the ship and they're going to just place it right there. (laughs) But you can see though, as they, the more they talk, Mm. You can yeah. see where you can start and to if draw this the is comparisons. A, and if this is a boutique hotel, which yes. is what I've heard is going to be a boutique hotel, it's not going to be, you know, um, the contemporary, right. that that makes more sense. That they have fewer guests so you can control mm-hmm. arrival and departure. So the, do you think they will not let, you know how you can wander into a Disney hotel now, a Walt Disney World hotel? You can go on the monorail ride and visit all the hotels. Do you think they won't allow non-Star Wars critters into the hotel? I assume that there will be something like a gift shop and a restaurant that could be open to all people who want to go there, but I don't believe you'll be able to go beyond that. Yeah, I could almost see if we're going with the departure <laughs> like style, kind of like what you were saying, but mixed with Tracy, maybe you when you first enter in the hotel, it's like a, a terminal, kind of right. airport style, where you have those basic things, but Unless Only you have the ticket, yep. you can't get to the next level. You can't get into mm-hmm. into space. Right. There would be no pass. You would not be able to pass through that hotel to get to Hollywood right. Studios. You have to be a guest of that hotel. Again. Yeah, we it are is. so on to something here. <laughs> we've, we've cracked it. <laughs> we've we know it's going to happen. If not, no, we idea. came up yeah, with no a clue. great idea for a <laughs> hotel. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> if they don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, if, can you imagine if they weren't going to, and now they've decided they are? They will never give us credit. I'm convinced that's why they're going to Japan because we went to Japan. But <laughs> A little big headed of me, I think. <laughs> Kevin, you okay over there? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know this how much my sinuses hurt. <laughs> I don't know how uh, much I can get into the really whole a total immersion. I'm very excited about this. It seems like it's going to be really cool. I, I don't know if I can really get into the total. I'm a character doing I, stuff. I gotta say, I'd like to be there seeing you being a character doing <laughs> stuff. Uh, it's it's awkward. It's yeah. kind of like, I mean, drawing on my time working in the Wizarding World, where we're trained and excited to be in that area, but we go into full immersion mode. It's really hard to get guests to interact the same way so with you when you're trying to you're trying to play the part, and guests just feel awkward doing it. Now that I don't work there anymore, if I go and start interacting with someone there that I don't know, and they they're in they're playing the whole game with me, I'm like, stop talking to me. I don't want to do this, but, <laughs> but we, it's we very also awkward. Talked about this before too. Can you imagine the level of cast member they're going to have to have? Oh yeah, it, it's going to be the best of the best, honestly. But they're they, also they going have to have to have this. Like you're going you work a shift in Disney. So can you imagine going to work and knowing that you had to do this, that same... I think this this cast member is going to be such a fan of Star Wars. Like, I think they almost have to be, don't you? Because the people that are going to be immersed in this, they're going to know every little detail of every single Star Wars thing that ever happened. Well, you also talk about, going back to the cruise ship idea, you talk about how um, cast on the on the cruise ship works. Yeah. 
that's how the cast in this hotel would might have to work. Yeah. Right. Where they actually stay there overnight. They're on the voyage with you. They're on the voyage with you. They'll have to get to know you and really oh start to interact like the servers. <laughs> it's it's going to be next level. I mean, I think it'll be half just higher good cast members to work these positions, but also then they are going to need to pull from a lot of talented actors in the area. Yep. Um, Cause that's, that's honestly what they'll need. They can't just get away with normal, normal cast. It'll have to be Cause won't they have to have people who look like the characters? No, no because I don't believe we're looking at it being, I could be wrong. I don't, I don't think th- it's going to be a real place right. with real people. I don't right? think it's going to. Well, I don't think you're going to see like Princess Leia. No, and, no, that's what I mean. Right. Yeah. It's not going to be the actual. <sighs> you characters. know, they weren't real, right? It's, <laughs> <laughs> they felt real. I think it's going to be people who are existing at this time and this place. Okay, in the so Star it's not going to be the critters from the movie. No, there okay. might be some critters from the movie, but it might not be. <laughs> well, they've also just as a general. Um, besides Ray getting added to Launch Bay later this year, they've mm-hmm. really gotten away from uh, allowing too many face characters in the parks. Uh, something that I always completely disagreed with. It never made sense to have a terrible lookalike stand in as Luke Skywalker and take a picture with them. That's part of what was great about the Wizarding World right up front. They said, no, you're not going to be able to meet Harry Potter. Right. He's in the castle. That's where you can see him if you want to do that, and that's about it. And I hope, I still well, hope to pull that, that off don't with go Johnny back. Depp too. Yeah, and it, you know Johnny Depp because he's in such heavy makeup and stuff. Sometimes that works. That's why you can meet Chewbacca and Darth Vader, no problem. Uh-huh. But you start to see a terrible looking Han Solo, and it just it throws you out of it completely. So. I don't mean to be totally geeked out and totally <laughs> Star Wars about it. Star Wars now exists. Over a multiple time frame. Yeah. Right. So how do you concentrate that? You can't have certain characters existing at the same time as other characters. Yeah, you have to go the timeless yeah. route. It's just <laughs> what happens here, it's right. It's timeless. Right. It's caught in a bubble. There. So yeah. for the uninformed about all things Star Wars, this, as I understand it, is a new galaxy, a new land. This is not a replica of anything else that's happened in a movie, even just talking about the part in the park. Well, par- the park is, uh, Galaxy's Edge is... Batu, uh, Batu is uh, a place that's on the edge of the galaxy that was a trading post. Okay. So you could run into characters from the Star Wars Got universe you. because they could pass through that place. Gotcha. So that's how they explain there it. There will be a Millennium Falcon. There will be X-Wing fighters. Kevin, stop reading <laughs> on your phone. <laughs> you must pay attention to the conversation. Um, so there is a, a chance for that overlap there. Right. But I don't think you're going to see Kylo Ren walking through the hotel. Right. That's my opinion. No. All right. Whew, boy, we really we got really deep into that one, didn't we? That was deep. <laughs> yeah. Let's remember this, because when it actually comes out, it'll be interesting to see how the hotel... And so, Disney, if that was not what you were going to do, <laughs> but now you are going to do it, we both know you're not going to give me credit. At least at least, give us a three-hour jump on booking our clients in the rooms. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> No, I think they should make the Heinrichs experience. Yeah. <laughs> you know, That's got a whole different spin. <laughs> to- you totally immersed. You bring your own sheets. <laughs> your own <laughs> sheets, your own towels. towels. Lots, of, lots of Perel. <laughs> Everyone gets their own bathroom. Yeah. All right. Move- <laughs> she would love that. I would. It'd be like the best thing ever. All right. Moving on to the last bit of news that come from D23. Epcot's Guardians of the Galaxy attraction will be opening in 2021. The new Guardians of the Galaxy themed attraction will be a roller coaster. Big news. Uh, With the Guardians of the Galaxy inspired coaster, Disney is going big. This one of a kind family attraction will be one of the world's longest enclosed roller coasters when it's added to Future World in Epcot. It will feature a unique story currently be created currently being created by Walt Disney Imagineering, include a new innovative innovative ride system that's guaranteed to wow guests. The Guardians of the Galaxy-inspired coaster is part of an ongoing work, just part of ongoing work to transform Epcot into a place that's more family, more relevant, more timeless, more Disney. Here's a quote from Bob Chapek, chairman of Walt Disney Parks and Resorts. Quote, as we build upon its core mission of optimism and hope to inspire the world, the real will become fantastic and the fantastic will become real in whole new ways at Epcot. 
The attraction will be open in time for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World Resort in 2021. Seems like there is a great deal of explanation of why this is going to work in Epcot, (laughs) of why Guardians of the Galaxy fits in Epcot, and how they're going to make it fit. So there. I agree. I concur. It's always fun. I think yeah. Craig. Talk to Craig. <laughs> I think it's fun. I think it's going to be great yeah. to have a new coaster. There's the big, you know, the internet argument that these characters don't fit in Epcot. We had this discussion on the Tuesday show. Again, this whole explanation of how it's going to be a whole new Epcot that's going to be more family, more exciting, makes us think that other things are going to change as well. Yeah. Is that, Epcot has always appealed to a certain group. Uh, there is a fans of Epcot. It's really one of my favorite parks. Um, but you hear the whole other side of people. I don't. I don't need to go to Epcot. I hear from clients all the time. I don't need to go to Epcot. There's nothing in Epcot for me. Nothing there for my kids. So I think they're trying to find the balance between the two. I have a feeling what all the diehards love about Epcot is no longer going to exist the way it is now, um, unless they can kind of keep the world showcase a little bit the way it is, but even there, they're integrating more and more characters. I don't know. I don't know what yeah, they're going to do. I think part of it, too, is there's a lot of people. Um, you know, I, I'm in a weird age range that I grew up going to Epcot at the 90s, so it was still pretty much, when I first started going, it was pretty much untouched uh, from what it was in the early to mid-80s when it was all, all the attractions started to open up and such. Uh, and so, like, I have that nostalgia, for it right now and yeah deep down i wish i wish some of those things wouldn't have went away and they could come back but on the opposite spectrum i know that one day i'm gonna have kids and i don't know if they would have felt the same nostalgic way about the stuff that i did because uh it would have been dated and such so i think we're just at that weird point where uh, a lot of us grew up with it and it's, you know, it, it's kind of so it's hard to let go of that nostalgia in that point. But on the other side of the rainbow, while I think the theme is going to be muddy uh, and completely just a mess, I, I think Epcot as a whole is going to be a stronger park and a stronger draw uh, for the for the average guest who comes. And that's that's what we always have to step back and look at. We are in a very unique group of people who is obsessed with Disney and know the ins and outs of it, consider ourselves experts, but that is not the majority of the people exactly. who travel. Yep. I have the same sort of um, nostalgia for it too, but I look back to like when I went the first year Epcot opened and Communicore, the Communicore yeah. East and West, was filled with stuff that I found dazzling. Yeah. However, if you hold a cell phone in your hand, it's no longer dazzling. Exactly. It's antique technology and i think part of what epcot's i think we talked about this also that even tomorrowland in order to stay tomorrowland had to go retro tomorrowland back to jules verne's jules verne's version of tomorrowland it would be very hard for anybody to keep up with the way technology is moving and keep that sort of future world yeah, and I, I to it, and I think they are part of what they're doing. When you start to think about it, one of the things that isn't uh, some people are saying it a lot about Guardians. It's going to be the longest enclosed roller coaster uh, at in the world. So that right there, while it might not seem impressive to a lot of people on paper, that is a, a technical feat. It is something that yeah. is pushing pushing the edge of how much roller coaster you can put in one building uh, inside this park. So I, I guess there's ways to find uh, little bright spots in this along. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm sure the attraction's going to be cool. incredible. But I said this the other day, <clears throat> think of, I mean, Soren doesn't really fit with the land. No. It doesn't really have anything to do with that, but it hasn't crashed Epcot. I mean, right. exactly. And so it, it's not really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and that is a marvel, too. It's time engineering wise. It was oh. just a little bit bigger take on a simulator. But the whole style of the starting out as a, a rector set on how to get the entire system working. I mean, I just don't think it's yeah. I think the worry that this is going to muddy Epcot's theme. I, I think that ship sailed. Yeah, I, I mean, you put Soren in, and it's 
it's already muddy. So I don't know that we have that oh, future world. Yeah, it's, and like we said on that show, it's already it's already muddied up now. I think it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. But like uh, you said on that. Or better and better. Oh, that too. Muddy or muddy. I'm, I'm, what, what draws me to this story is I like that they keep saying it's a family coaster. Yeah. So it feels to me like it's not loops and mm-hmm. so intense that everyone can enjoy it together. Um, is I this the movie with the talking tree? Yes, it is a talking tree. What, I have a question for you, Tracy. <clears throat> when your clients say, I don't have to go to Epcot, do they say why? Or they just think or? there's nothing there for their kids. So, like, I have for a. Kids, I got it. Yeah. And so they think there's nothing there for kids to do at Epcot. And I have a big rebuttal for that because I think Epcot's fantastic. I and do too. When Ben was younger, it was one of our favorite places to be. Um, so much to see. But I think it's just not knowing. Um, and sometimes people will say, we don't need to go to the Animal Kingdom. We have a zoo at home. What? <laughs> right. Right? It's like, no, it's not even almost the same thing. Yeah. It's not um, the zoo. Right. It's not the zoo. It's not the zoo. Um, so I think it's just a matter of, of letting people know there's so much more there than what you think. And there's like, I mean, Epcot at this point, I'm noticing, I was there for the art festival a little while ago. We've been a couple of times. Um, Epcot has really become, uh, and I hate to say the word because it's a buzzword, but it's really become a millennial park. You know, like there are people there in what I would call costume, but they're not in costume. They're in like their dapper wear yeah. and going to enjoy the afternoon. And it's it's kind of taken on a life of its own. And it's not the same Epcot that I remember from 10 years ago. Um, it's you're, you, it's no, you're, changing. It's different. I don't know if it's all these festivals, all these food booths all the time, the food and wine aspect, because you're making, you know, flower and garden is food and wine. I'm, everything has a food and wine kind of aspect to it. I don't know if it's because of that. It, but I it's think, changing. I think it's part of that, too. Uh, Epcot has essentially, like, you go to Disneyland, and like you said, with the dapperware, all that stuff, it's kind of, it's, I've seen that from Disneyland since I started going, because the locals, the people who are in love with that park have really embraced it, wanting to, to feel like it's a special thing to go to Disneyland. And I feel like a lot of people with us, you know, Magic Kingdom is just, it's so... It's the mainstream park here, whereas mm-hmm. Epcot is that that second one that came along. That's a little bit special. They're the first unique park uh, with unique attractions and stuff when it opened up here, and so I think they've taken that and embraced it in that way. And plus, I mean, it's just it has become the park. That's where you go if you want to drink. Years that's ago, where you go if you I used eat. to say that people in New York City have Central Park. Mm-hmm. I here in Florida used Epcot as my yeah. park, mm-hmm. as yep. local park. That. Yep. There were things to see and do. There were places to eat. You could yep. nosh your way around, and you could hang out and watch the people. It was more, yep. to me, of that kind of atmosphere. I never worried about what the theme was. Right. It was more, this is where yep. I went to go. It felt more like a world's fair to me. It was wider space. There was, was much more room. Less congestion. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. This is exactly what we thought of the park let as me, well. Let me throw this out. Is it a possibility that Disney has run out of places to put stuff? Like Guardians of the Galaxy really fits in Hollywood Studios, but there's no place to put Guardians of the Galaxy in Hollywood Studios. So it also kind of competes with Star Wars Land. What I'm saying is, let's so now let's utilize Epcot right. and utilize that section of the park to bring those things in that we need to bring in in general. I don't know if it's a space thing or if it's uh, we don't have enough room for all the people that want to be in this park. We need to get people to go to different parks. parks. And and I, I also think, think of the things they could do in Future World with like WALL-E mm-hmm. or The Incredibles. That's, that yeah. seems to fit more to me than Guardians of the right. Galaxy. That so if I don't know that Disney is worried any longer about the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Yeah. Right now, Guardians is, I mean, that was the unexpected hit of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So they need to get it in. And it just, it keeps getting more popular. It'll get more popular with Infinity War and then the third standalone movie. But I think it goes back to what Tracy said about uh, what the feedback she gets from her clients. If you look at kids going to Walt Disney World now, Almost inevitably, you will see one out of every five strollers, a kid holding an iPad in it mm-hmm. as they're being pushed around. Epcot just, it, it's on the parents to make their kids want to care mm. about 
world showcase and learning about these cultures or learning about the things you see in future world because they're not going to want that anymore. It's right. it's changed. It's times have changed on that. Epcot and, can't be. I want to run to test track. I want to run to Soren, and now let's get somewhere else. Yeah. I also think. How long is it going to be before there's a Black Panther ride? Probably very very soon. Yeah, very. Because yeah. that is a very yeah. popular movie that hasn't even come out yet. Right. right. So, but I think that if you look at the parks now, Magic Kingdom will always have the draw. The studios is going to have Star Wars and Pixar for those. Um, and the new Mickey ride for Kevin. So it's got something for everybody. Animal Kingdom has Pandora, which totally took me by surprise. But, man, Flights of Passage is like nothing I've ever experienced in my life, and it never gets old. Um, And now they're putting their attention on Epcot, and they have a lot of acreage over there, a lot of real estate, a lot of places to put people. And as these parks are getting full, you're going to see parks hitting capacity, you know, it's. I think the it's day just Epcot hits capacity, you know, it's crowded. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. You know, it's crazy. No kidding. So then the question becomes: When are we going to see another park? We've been speculating about it for years that Disney needs one. I think we have reached maximum density. I think they need. But they also need more hotels. They need yeah. more resorts yeah. first because I wish we were at a meeting once. You remember, and they told us that if every room at Disney was full, the parks would only be at forty percent capacity, assuming no other, you day know, guests. no other day guests. So or off property guests. Yeah. So that tells me they need hotels. They yes. need resorts, um, and I think. In my opinion, that's going to be their focus. Because short of a handful of days throughout the year, parks are not reaching capacity. There's a handful throughout the year that they do, and it's typically Magic Kingdom. Um, As long as parks aren't reaching capacity, but they don't have enough hotel rooms to put all the guests that want to be here, I think that's going to be their focus. I think they also took a note from Universal's book, too, when Universal started getting rid of Back to the Future, Jaws, all their classic attractions, and saying, well, we're not, we don't have the space, so we're going to upgrade and we're saying bye to nostalgia to look forward towards the future. And considering their parks have only gone up in attendance, gotten busier, making more money, I think Disney is looking at that too and saying, you know what, maybe we were too focused on nostalgia in the past and not not truly embracing the change. And now they're just going forward with it. So I think it it has hit that same era now. We saw it with cutting, you know, in the past before, losing losing Horizons and such for Mission Space, Test Track, taking over World of Motion. But just this year alone, losing Great Movie Ride, Universe of Energy. Um, I can't even remember what else. Streets of America last year, all that back. Yeah, they are now tour. embracing, we have this space. We're not utilizing it properly. Let's just, let's rip off the Band-Aid get rid of the stuff that's not working anymore and replace it with stuff that is instead of building a new park. Well, there was also a couple of years of, there was a great many years of acquisition yeah. where the parks seemed to lag. They bought Star Wars. They, they started out with Pixar. They bought Star Wars. They bought Marvel. So that, those were great expenditures. Yeah. It seems like now that they have that, Let's fold that into it's what's there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I think nostalgia nostalgia is an interesting thing because what's nostalgic to Kevin may not be nostalgic to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also, besides being an interest, it's also very generational. Mm-hmm. So oh, what's definitely. nostalgic to me now, you know, for my 20-year-old son, what's nostalgic for him is going to be a completely different thing. Like, I think he would call nostalgia Pokemon stuff. You know? you So you just think generation. So I think they're kind of replacing... You know what's old was what's new. Mm. It's I think it's forward thinking. And yeah. nostalgia it hurts. doesn't. And nostalgia <laughs> doesn't equate to butts and seats. No, you know it we we loved Alan's Energy Adventure, but I can't remember the last time right. we would go to a park and ride it. Right, and you said you loved the Great Movie Ride. You yeah. missed it. You're sad it went. Yeah. But when was the last time you were really there and on it? Yeah. Right, Only a couple months before it closed. Before right, because you know it's going to close. Because you know it's closing. Right, and so but that's the, that's the thing yeah. is I love that. I, I'm going to bring up a sore subject. Oh. Remember Mr. Toad? Mm-hmm. And people chained themselves to Mr. Toad. But the problem was no one rode the ride. Right. So Truly would cut you. I know. It's a good thing she's not here. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for a lively conversation. Uh, we hope everybody enjoyed the, our back and forth on that one. Thank you, everybody at home, for listening and watching. We hope you have a great week. 
and we hope you have a great vacation.